right, this is the ninth year of Electric Ireland's sponsorship of the GEA Minor Championships that was launched today. And I'm delighted to say that Dublin legend Jason Sherlock is with us. How are you getting on, Jason? I'm good on, yeah. Um, this wasn't around when I was a minor, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> a bit of a shame, you would have, you would have picked up a couple. A couple of uh, uh, minor star awards. I, I don't know about that now. We, we came up against a pretty talented Galway team that a few guys went on to have good careers. And, and, and Kerry, uh, they also had a, a really strong team back then. But um, no, it was still, it wasn't about awards. And uh, in a lot of ways, it, it minor has, it's a lot more than just awards. Um, it's, it's a great time for any kind of uh, formative young boy or girl playing, playing Gaelic football or hurling. And I, I certainly enjoyed my time as a minor and I was lucky enough to get involved with development squads and, and manage a minor team so it's, it's a great age to uh, to be involved in be it as a player or as a as a supporter or, or coach. For sure I can imagine. Uh, does it feel weird to even be looking forward to a GEA season on what is it now the, the middle of October and considering if Dublin could go for six in a row at, at senior level and having these conversations in October it does feel strange doesn't it? Yeah, well, and I haven't even got that far about Dublin's <laughs> ambitions. It's more whether we we can, we should. Like a lot of people are mm. are kind of trying to position: are are we right or where are we wrong? And it's very hard to get into that definitive at the moment because it has been such a movable feast. And um, I think that the priority has to be the health of individuals. That's first and foremost. And as we've seen, that that has changed from from week to week, from day to day. So um, I I can absolutely see why there are challenges against. Play Playing, playing sport but the other side is uh, as, as Irish people as sports people it would be great to have an outlet where we could see GA uh, we saw it with the club stuff I know there was a bit of bad press towards the end of it but just to have that outlet that social outlet where you didn't just have to talk about the latest COVID numbers that you had something else to talk about so I would feel it, it would be great if there if there is a championship and let's hope there is um, but at the same time it has to be based on, on the safety of the, the individuals involved and sometimes those things are so intertwined you can't separate them like even if we're talking about Ireland this week uh, at football like it's impossible to talk about that conversation without talking about the COVID tests and that is sort of how you start to feel about the GEA and how we all really wanted to come back and the key difference I guess is that GEA players aren't going to be traveling abroad they're going to be a fairly refined to Ireland totally refined to Ireland and that hopefully gives a, a little bit of hope because I think you're right I think that while it may not seem important right now, I think as supporters and anybody who's a big fan of their county, once that ball is thrown in, I do think you, you forget about everything else that's happening. I do think it is a, a genuine sort of escapism. Yeah, and, and, and we need that. We're, we're a, na a nation that's been immersed in all, all forms of sport. And obviously, GEA is right at the forefront of that. And again, through this whole process, the, the GEA commun community, like it, it has shown so much positivities of what the GEA community can do, be it assisting people with charities and various things. So I just think from a participating uh, perspective, both for underage minors we're talking about or, or senior, from the wellness point of view, view it is so important that these young boys and girls have have an outlet and I've no doubt that any anyone involved in inter-county senior inter-county hurling or football it, it's a prime focus of, of theirs as well and it, it, I suppose it's a release and a getaway of the reality that we're, we're currently in. Can we assume that it will go ahead uh, for, for the next few minutes and can we chat a little bit about this Dublin squad at the moment because there is an argument out there, and I think everybody looks around for an argument to try and take down the dubs every year to give everybody else a little bit of hope going into the championship. But one of the arguments out there is that a change in management team will take them a little while to get used to. And I wonder if actually there has been such a player-led environment that has been created in Dublin over the last five or six years that actually the change in management won't have anywhere near as much of an impact in Dublin as it would in any other county. I wonder, do you go along with that? I can see both sides of it. Um, I think for any manager coming in um, on the back of, of the team being, being as successful as they have been over the last number of years, that's going to provide challenges, obviously, because um, I suppose players might be used to doing things a certain way, etc. cetera. Um, obviously, then the, the, the new management team, they came in quite late into the, into the year. Um, and then obviously things have been shut down. So they haven't had as much time, I'm sure, as they would have liked to prepare the team and, and get them used to 
to their ideas and, and their kind of vision for the, for the team. On the flip side of that is maybe the extended break has kind of given that distinction between the old regime versus the new regime. And again, I, I think you, I can see both sides of that. It's absolutely fair for, for anyone that's interested in Gaelic football to, to kind of think about what impact it will have on Dublin. But like all teams, these are very unusual circumstances. Mm. Uh, it's going to be a totally different dynamic uh, in terms of the format of the championship, playing in front of, of no crowds, etc. So that is going to have an impact on teams. And then obviously we might have situations like the Irish soccer team where players might be able to play or whatever. So, yeah, it, it's all new. And I suppose it will be whatever team can respond in, in the right way will prosper. Can I ask you about that player-led environment then, the, the idea that they might be a little bit more resistant to, to outside forces? From your experience in the camp over the last few years, it seems that there was a movement towards creating that player-led environment. Not that it wasn't, didn't already exist, but it definitely got stronger, it seemed, down through the years. Is that true and, and how long did that take? Um... I don't know. I think like all management teams, you have philosophies and beliefs. And I think certainly uh, between Jim and Declan Darcy, who who have been there, obviously, as you know, for so for so long. And I was lucky enough to get involved in, in 2015. I think I think Jim's definition of leadership is to serve, you know, to serve in the in the best way. And, and that's not about telling. That's about uh, joining and collaborating and and letting individuals figure things out for themselves. So so definitely that kind of um, developed uh, as years went by and as as obviously guys had had experiences. Lucky enough, they were a lot of them were positive experiences, but certainly they could build on on experience after experience to to give them, I suppose, the confidence that they can they can kind of lead and and they can go directions, but. It, it all comes down to that care piece that they, they care about Dublin as a county and what the jersey means to to represent Dublin. They also have a, a deep care and, I suppose, ambition to improve themselves from day to day. And I don't see that change in, um, regardless of, of who, who is managing them. And uh, I suppose it's to their credit that the perceived success that they've had over the last number of years, um, so far, it hasn't really impacted them on, on the pitch. I guess it helps as well when you have characters like Kevin McManaman in the squad who have actual expertise in areas to take talks in mindfulness or helping the, the mindset of his teammates and actually having that expertise within the playing group. It, that's an unbelievable uh, amount of assets to have uh, on that level. Yeah, well, like every individual brings something to the table. And mm. I think you look at the um, Darren Daly, he, who retired recently, you saw the kind of outpour of the team, uh, the t- his teammates about the impact that he had. And again, that's someone that maybe from from outside, you wouldn't really appreciate or value the impact that he's making into the into the team. So I'd like to think that we we allowed all individuals to prosper in their own way and i suppose that that added to the mix and the, and the blend that that the the guys have uh, and the levels of performance the guys have given over the last number of years uh, for a moment could we go back to the start of your time with the dublin management team and i guess post 2014 when jim gavin comes to you how does that conversation go how quickly after that season in 14 do you know that you're going to be involved for for 2015 um, I, uh, I wouldn't know the exact specifics, but sure. I do. I do remember Jim reaching out probably like in the winter of of 2014, and initially it was like it was just a cup of coffee, and he he, he kind of had a, a thought or an idea and a suggestion of me getting involved. So I suppose initially, I, and I said it to him at the time, my my heart was kind of saying just shake his hand and say absolutely, but I suppose my head was more concerned about what I could actually add because at that stage I had very little little sports coaching um, background behind me. Um, I'd obviously been a former player and um, things didn't finish the way um, some of the guys are finishing now so I, I had to kind of weigh that stuff up as well but um, I suppose I'd just been uh, just graduated from DCU doing an MBA and I suppose in that MBA you, you reflect a lot upon yourself in terms of where you are as an individual and from a leadership perspective what you can bring to 
the table. So I was actually able to apply a lot of my learnings from the MBA from DCU into my sports coaching. And that certainly helped me at the, at the very start. So again, once I got the clarity of, of my, what my role might be with Jim, um, after that, it was over to me to kind of, I suppose, uh, win the trust of the players and, and try to add value in any way that I could. I presume finding the trust of the players wasn't a difficulty for you at all, given how they would have probably idolised you as a footballer when they were growing up. Uh, well, that, that's that's quite emotional in terms of a sports fan. Like, and sure. again, I would hate I'd hate the guys to think, "Oh, well, I have to listen to him because yeah. he played for Dublin." From my point of view, it was adding value to them. It wasn't about me as a player. It was about me understanding their challenges and how I suppose I could I could put a mirror in front of them to see, well, where are your opportunities to improve both individually and then I suppose collectively as a team. So that was my goal, my mission. Um, I suppose. It, it would be nice and I'm sure some of the guys obviously supported Dublin through the through the more barren years so obviously that was nice that there was that connection and I would have obviously played with a lot of those guys but certainly I saw my role to be the best coach for, for the players and to serve the players as best as I could. When you say at the start you weren't sure if there was much you could add to Jim Gavin's team how quickly do you realise then that actually you're contributing quite a lot and actually I'm not half bad at what I do in this camp? Eh, uh, oh God, I, I don't know whether I've got to that stage. Um, no, like my job was to kind of understand what those guys were doing. And, and ultimately, it, it was about kind of understanding how they were playing the game and what they were trying to do and, and see how we could improve. For me, it, it probably in hindsight was a blessing in disguise that Dublin were beaten in 2014 because potentially Jim mightn't have come calling if, if Dublin had beaten Donegal, who knows. But certainly I felt from the outset that there was an appetite not only from Jim and Declan, but also an appetite from the players that obviously like with all adversity we we need to improve and we need to get better uh, if we so decide and I certainly from from day one I felt accepted um, and people were were willing to to give me the opportunity to talk I suppose then it was over to me to ensure that what I what I spoke uh, ha- had impact and, and made sense to the players. How big was that 2014 loss in the way you as a management team thought about the game and the way Dublin would approach things from 2015 onwards? Um, Yeah, I'd like to think that 2014 had a big impact, no different than kind of all the years after that um but i think the fact and people will refer to it because it was the last championship loss it it, it obviously had a, a significant impact and like all games um if you do re- reflect on them on them there's a lot of learning there and um, that's not only in defeats that's in successes and i suppose that's been the beauty of this team that even in the successful games we really trawl back and try to get the learnings and the improvements we didn't just accept because the scoreboard said we won that that was good enough so it it was definitely the case in 2014 that the guys obviously it was it was obviously a big defeat it was very disappointing but they were willing to dust themselves off and and kind of reflect on it in the sense of well how can we ensure that this doesn't happen again so again without without going into specifics it was it was more the mindset that we needed to improve because um, has Donegal proved that uh, it wasn't going to be good enough to, to to win on any given day. That's interesting because I, I definitely thought that it was less to do with the mindset and more to do with maybe, I guess, getting caught a couple of times by Donegal tactically because I, I know Pat Gilroy likes to use the phrase emotional hijacking quite a bit and, and Bernard Brogan put it in, in his book and after 09 they felt that they were emotionally hijacked by Kerry and then come 2011 they had done that to Kerry. But come 2014 it was almost a situation where Jim had taken has no responsibility for the defeat and that there was a difference of a game plan to, to to look into for the following year but there was obviously a, a mental aspect to all of that as well so so what were those those mental reasons for for why that happened in 2014 well, I wasn't involved in 2014, sure. so I suppose I can only comment from the outside looking in. And I think, obviously, the guys played a certain style at that stage. And full credit to, to Donegal, they came up with a game plan that they felt would counteract Dublin style. I think what, what, what Dublin did and what we tried to do from game after game was to evolve and to be comfortable with the, the situ- situations we might find ourselves in. I think it's no 
secret that the majority of teams play against Dublin. They they are overly defensive, and I think that was a challenge that Dublin had to figure out. And I'd like to think, and I take a lot of satisfaction to see the players being able to kind of look at a setup or a strategy and to be able to kind of deal with it and in a lot of ways deal with it comfortably because I think as a sports fan we like to see like open attacking football and it was great for a team to unlock the kind of defensive Mm. challenge and uh, I think that's something that Dublin came to terms with over the last number of years and they actually enjoyed when a team set up defensively against them. Was there a moment when you felt that all right, this is clicked now, that those defensive systems, we know how to do this. But was was there a kind of a eureka moment almost when you realised it had worked? Well, but even, but before that, it, it was it, like, again, going back to the players in terms of how willing they were to learn and adapt and improve. Like, because you're talking about talented guys that had back medals in their back pocket, mm. but their kind of understanding and commitment to get better and to kind of play to the benefit of the team was was so impressive over those years and it really was putting layer upon layer both from a, a practice point of view but also like from a, a, an analysis point of view understanding the uh, the challenges and what the options were uh, I suppose in terms of how that that output I, I think the obvious one would be against Haron in the semi-final um, I'm not sure what year it was but um, again how we, the perception of how the Tyrone play and they played to that uh, system um, and it's, it's always been a, a very hard challenge for any team to break down but I think um, it was quite satisf- satisfying seeing the team go out, understand what the challenge was and to be able to kind of counteract it. I, I, I think that was a, 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 an enjoyable day on the sideline. Definitely. It, and that's the essence of management, isn't it? The essence You're of coaching. You're saying definitely as a carry man that to see it or definitely for me. <laughs> Uh, definitely from your perspective. Not <laughs> okay. I, was, uh, I do remember that, t- 2017. I, I definitely remember, uh, use that word again, just like how earth shattering that performance was for everybody else in terms of what we expected from that game because I guess the other semi-final that year had been so even it had gone to a replay and then there was just this really complete performance where the best team in the country had taken another step up and it was, I guess, a little bit, uh, I guess it was terrifying for everybody else who was, looking on and, and seeing what was happening that day but I guess just from a coach's perspective you say that I was satisfying to see it all come together like that has to be a, as good as it gets as a as a coach a, actually knowing what your plan was and seeing that plan executed to perfection and, and getting a big win as a result I wouldn't say perfection um, okay. I think there was there was definitely uh, like there was periods of that game where I think and like we would have challenged ourselves and we, we would have seen the areas to improve. And I think like one of the challenges of not being there is that you don't have that opportunity to improve from, from game after game. And uh, yeah, definitely I, I, like all games. And I, I mentioned like the, the Donegal 2014 had loads of learnings. I've no doubt that that game um, had loads of learnings as well, as did the games last year. And I suppose that's the evolution and that's the, the, the constant commitment to improving that those guys have. And I've no doubt that whatever we did last year isn't going to cut it this year, that those guys will have the thought process and the mindset. And I'd like to think they'll have the creativity to have a new imp- and improved performance this year. Did you ever get close to perfection? Do you think, what, or what was the performance that came closest? I, we, we, there was certainly, and again, <laughs> I, I, I need to put this in context. This was an exceptional team who yeah. have performed exceptionally over the last number of years, and obviously the success will, will demonstrate that. But like for me, I suppose, did we seek perfection? Probably not. Is is perfection attainable? Probably not. But there's certainly periods of games over the last five years that just to be able, you mentioned that word satisfying, that have been really satisfying. And for me, that, that wasn't just in All-Ireland Finals. You could go back into Leinster Championship games first round where, okay, the scoreboard might have been one-sided. But like looking at the guys perform to a level, the understanding, the teamwork, the option taken, they, they took that to me was where I got the buzz and the energy knowing uh, how those guys prepared to kind of to perform the way they did so uh, certainly they did it in in patches but uh, there's still a bit of room for improvement I I would have thought. Right well that is a a truly terrifying signal of intent to to everybody else that the the five in a row dubs can get even better. Um, Jason what's next for you personally like uh, I presume you've had time to think this year everybody's had a bit of time to think this year have you distilled your thoughts down over the last few years in working in that setup? 
into something that has developed into targets over the next little while or, or, or what, where is your mindset at? Yeah, so like I would have done a lot of reflection on the last number of years and, and kind of try to, I suppose, um, reflect on it in a, in a way that I can bring it with me onto to the next chapter, whatever that is. I think when you when you come out of an environment like that, I think it's good to get away and get a new perspective. Um, I've been able to reacquaint with the golf course, which has been good over the last while. Um, so that, that's been enjoyable. But I suppose straight away, I'm in, instantly, t- I think back to, the areas of what I could have done better. I think as a coach, uh, there's definitely a lot of learnings there. I'd think back of, I suppose, the, did, did I serve the players as well as I could in certain areas? And um, that's certainly very much of a big part of my thought process. I think the opportunity to, to improve is, is gone, obviously. Um, and, and that's frustrating because, I, as I said, I, I do think there, there are areas where, where we were improving and we, we could have got better. But obviously, that, that, that I don't have that opportunity at the moment. I think then, personally, moving on, I, I'm, a big, I'm a big, I suppose, supporter and, and student of sport. I, I love it. Um, so, obviously, I've kind of reflected and, and kind of saw what I can bring to the table in, in other environments. Um, actually, for this photo shoot for Electric Ireland, we were in uh, DCU St. Clair's. And I suppose in the other field, I could hear the, the Dublin team uh, training. And I suppose that was the first time I thought mm. um, normally I would have been on the other side of the the other side of the fence there and thinking about the opportunity to learn from those guys, to see those guys performing and going about their business. And yeah, you do miss that. And, and, and that's the piece that I suppose I miss is that time with those players, not only as footballers, because we all know how talented they are as footballers, but just as individuals, they are very decent people and they're a credit to Dublin GA. So I definitely have missed that part of it. And uh, obviously looking forward to, to getting back to see them. Where, where my future holds, I'm not too sure. I, I've been able to kind of devote a lot more focus and energy into my work life, my family life. And then socially, as I said, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to play golf a bit better. <laughs> How did those courses down in Kerry treat you? I saw you were down there for a while. Yeah, the courses were fine. We we got uh, hustled by Mr. Donny and Mike Quirk one day uh, out on, out on the on the golf course, but nothing new there. Um, so we'll have to get them back on our home ground um, at some stage. But uh, yeah, no, it was, it was great to it was great to play a bit of golf, and at the time it was great to be able to to go down and, and to another part of the world. And obviously, there's a, a big connection between Dublin and Kerry. Well, hopefully, uh, from a, a Dublin or Kerry perspective, there, there might be a meeting this year. And hopefully there is a championship, as you say, rightfully at the start. Um, there is obviously, uh, it would bring so much happiness to everybody, bring so much joy. I presume that if it goes ahead, you are tipping Dublin for a six in a row. Or have you thought about that yet? Um, I haven't really thought about it. Mm. I think going back to your last question about what you miss, I think definitely coming out of last year's All-Ireland Final, you could certainly see that there was a, a, a rival on like in town and obviously yeah. we've like you guys have spoken about the talent of David Clifford and what he's done so far and like I think as a champion you need, you need good rivals and there's no doubt that this Dublin team are going to get a really strong Kerry team over the next number of years and that would be really interesting to see how how Dublin deal with that challenge not only that challenge but challenges that come from all over the country but again I, I'd be just I, I'm interested as a fan to see how this Kerry team develop because certainly they, they have the potential and the makings of being a, a really strong contender over the last over the next few years. Yeah, it's really exciting times, that's for sure. Uh, just a reminder before we wrap that, that the ninth year of Electric Ireland sponsorship of the GEA Minor Championships was launched today and part of it all was Dublin legend Jason Sherlock. Jason, great chatting to you. Thanks a million for taking the call. Thanks, Alan.